Cars today are far more complex than ever before. They need anywhere from several hundred semiconductors to more than a thousand. And these chips control everything from the ignition to the braking system and making sure your seat is in the perfect position as you drive. Individual chips, they're packaged inside these electronic control units. They sort of act as almost like separate organs that have a different function in the human body. They basically tell the hardware what to do electronically. But now, automakers can't source the semiconductors fast enough, and many cars are sitting in parking lots waiting for chips. Because during the pandemic, chips for vehicles were diverted to meet a surge in demand for electronics as people were stuck at home. And their availability has become tighter also because of natural disasters that disrupted the supply chain and the resurgence of COVID cases in important chip-making regions. This crunch could cost global automakers around $110 billion in revenue this year. This crisis has really forced automakers to kind of rethink both in the short term and the long term how they how they manage their their chips and their supply chain. So here's how companies are adjusting their production plans and what that means the next time you want to drive a car off the lot. One of the first solutions when you don't have enough of something, try to use less. So some automakers are dropping features that require chips. They're sort of small add on features. Uh, I think people have been willing to um, overlook that. Some car dealers in the US said the global auto company Stellantis, which owns Jeep, Ram and other brands, ships some pickup trucks without an electronic detection system, which looks out for blind spots. In another example, GM said it was building some full-size pickup trucks without software that helps manage fuel consumption. And Elon Musk said that Tesla was removing the adjustable lumbar support from the front passenger seat of some vehicles due to major industry-wide supply chain pressure. It hasn't been a big hit sort of reputationally uh, or from a market share standpoint, that they've been kind of forced to take that step. For instance, Stellantis reported more than $89 billion in net revenue in the first half of this year, while General Motors had a strong second quarter with $2.8 billion in net profit. But automakers have had to make some tough choices, like choosing between vehicles. Car companies are all trying to figure out what prioritize what they want to make and what can be sacrificed. For instance, General Motors said it's been shifting computer chips away from its less profitable vehicles and using them in its more popular ones. But even with diverting inventory, there's no guarantee that there will be enough chips for the vehicles that have been prioritized. When they may not have one of the chips that they need, they'll continue to build those vehicles and then they're setting them aside in parking lots around the factory and waiting for chips to arrive. This is what some in the industry called the build shy strategy. The good part about that strategy is it, it, it allows them to keep the factory running because it's costly to keep turning off and turning back on your factory. But this can mean chipless cars end up sitting on the lot for an indefinite amount of time. Ford said that at the end of March, it had more than 20,000 vehicles parked and waiting for chips. GM over the summer, they said they had 30,000 pickup trucks at a plant in Missouri. While these strategies have helped companies to keep going in the short term, it's also forced them to plan for the future by rethinking the entire process. For decades, the auto industry has really kind of perfected this just-in-time model where components arrive at the factory and even right at the assembly line uh, just as they're needed. That allows them to lower their inventory costs and there's a lot of efficiencies that go with that. But the chip shortage has shown this model breaks down during a global crisis like the pandemic. Companies are looking at moving to stockpiling really crucial computer chips. There's been direct outreach from, you know, auto executives to chip suppliers, which, you know, hadn't been happening in the past. And auto companies not only want more visibility in the supply chain, but also more direct control. Some of the companies have talked about even getting more involved in designing their own chips. Designing components to need fewer chips. I know Ford specifically has talked about that. This is infrastructure. There's also a big push from the US government to shore up its own domestic chip making capacity. The Biden administration has said it would prioritize increasing domestic chip manufacturing by investing roughly $50 billion toward research and development. But building new foundries and increasing chip production will take years. And that means automakers will likely continue to scale back production. In early September, GM said it's temporarily idling two main factories that produce its pickup trucks, 
while Ford said it's temporarily halting the production of its F-150 at its Kansas City factory in Missouri. Even some of the more chip-ready automakers like Toyota said it would cut production in Japan by 40% in September. And in the short run, all this won't be good news for customers. There just simply aren't enough cars. Usually Americans want to drive off in a car that day and that's not happening nearly to the same degree as it normally has.